Uh, very warm welcome to everyone at Connect SRCC. It's my pleasure to be here, really. It's not. I was usually going to start my introduction, but Kuldeep sir has already said a lot. Just want to correct him that I'm not in my 20s, I'm still 17. <laughs> <laughs> so today we have gathered on to talk about sustainable development. My forte is in the field of technology, so I'm going to talk about sustainable technology. That stands for TED, Technology Entertainment Design, so I'm going to talk about the T here. Uh, laptops, smartphones, and tablets, everyone uses them every day. Let me start by asking you guys a question. How many of you do not have a gadget in your device right now, in your pocket right now? Everyone has one, right? That's what. So, technology is expanding at a really, really fast pace, but we need to sustain it to make it usable. Uh, every day there are new inventions and innovations in the field of technology. Every morning I read on my uh, laptop that a new invention is made, a new smartphone is launched in the world. I just can't comment on how big the world of technology is growing. And most of us welcome these de developments with open hands and we are looking forward to get a new device every month. Uh, everyone was waiting for the iPhone 5 to launch when the iPhone 4 then came iPhone 4S. I mean, everyone's waiting to get the new device as soon as it launched. But what we are forgetting is that these devices take some resources to be made and developed. These resources are depleting at a very fast pace. As the new devices launch, the previous devices, we don't know what to do with them. We'll probably give it to one of our younger brothers and throw it away. We just waste it out. The devices are getting destroyed. I mean, how many of you bought a smartphone in the last six months? See, that's, we can already see so many hands going up. So that's what I'm trying to say, uh, that the technology is expanding so fast that we are throwing away new gadgets and everything behind. We're leaving behind old gadgets. But what we are forgetting is that we need to use, make some use for the old gadgets. What, we, what should we do with them? Coming back to the presentation here. Uh, do you know that all of your technology is made using probably some LCD screens, some chips, some buttons, some radios? But what are these radios and these buttons and chips made from? Uh, these all things are made from one common thing known as rare earth elements. So that's my presentation is going to be about. I'm very small presentation. There are 17 rare earth elements, mm, and most of these are used in all the technology we develop in today's world. Clean technologies, def defense communications, then probably uh, uh, health technologies, smartphones, communication technologies, advanced communications. Everything use these these. 17 rare earth elements. I'm going to refer to them as REEs from now on, just for the convenience. REEs are rare resources in the earth, minerals, that, though found abundantly, are not concentrated enough to make them exploitable economically. Even though we can find these everywhere, but they are not in one place, so we cannot really exploit them to our own benefit. REEs, let's talk about what are the current uh, China, okay. China is the current producer of REEs. Over 100% of the world supply in REEs is managed by China right now. China is the only country that can produce the technology that we use today. You can see that iPhone was invented in US, but US doesn't have the capability to produce the iPhone. That's why go to China. Everyone here knows that China is the place where we go to get all our gadgets from. All of, most of the stuff is made in China. One of the reasons why the cost is so less is not because the labor is too much. India has almost as much population as China, but we are still not producing the iPhone, we are not producing the Android tablets. Everything is in China because China has the capabilities of REEs. It's the only country that has over, I see, two thirds of the world supply of REEs. So, how do we use these REEs? Let's see, clean technologies. You know, sustainable development is only going to be possible if we develop new kinds of technologies that keep the earth clean and do not spoil it. Uh, like someone here was talking about, someone throws something on the ground, you throw some other stuff. How do you clean all that? Clean technologies are dependent on that. Using wind power, someone talked about solar power here. If solar power can only be made if we have REEs in existence. If that's not there, how do you develop the clean technologies? Health, MRI scans, x-rays, cancer research can only be done if we have REEs. Computing, mobile entertainment, advanced communications. Everyone's communicating here. We all communicate with someone in the morning. We all come here, we communicate. It. That all is possible through advanced communications. Defense, a uh, very important factor is defense, that how do we protect ourselves is all through REEs. Let's go a bit more in depth. Okay, starting with computing, mobile entertainment. Uh, all the gadgets you have, all the laptops, everything is based on computing, mobile entertainment. 
designers, the developers, the professionals, every, everyone uses REEs to make the mobility possible. We have seen vibration, audio amplification, GPS, color displays, your TVs, your batteries, your NFC technologies recently came about, hard drives, camera lenses, and probably a lot of other things are all made using REEs. You cannot have any of this if you don't have REEs in existence. You know, uh, the tablet and smartphone sales are expected to go multiply four times in the next two years. But do you think the resources will multiply? The Earth is becoming smaller, in fact, I suppose. It's not going to be four times, right? It's going to stay at the same size. Clean technologies. Uh, all these clean technologies that we are using to create sustainable development are based off REEs. Hybrid cars, electric cars is probably one that's encouraged a lot. Uh, hydro energy, water treatment, batteries, fluorescent lamps, solar energy, wind turbines, fuel cells, and probably all the futuristic technologies that we are going to develop are probably based on REEs. How do you expect to work with these technologies if you do not save the, all the REEs you have, if you do not consume them sustainably? How do you expect to use these technologies? Okay, defense. Uh, military generals have said that uh, current technology in the military can not function if we run out of REEs in the near future. Visitors in protection, anti-missile defense, aircraft pass and jet engines, underwater mine detectors, GPS, missile guidance systems. All of these are probably done through REEs. I'm pretty sure that you cannot have any of these without REEs. Advanced communications, like I said, almost everyone has a smartphone here. You cannot communicate without REEs. The satellites in the sky and the cables here, both of them are done using REEs. GPS, space-based satellites, communication system, signal amplification. All of them are made using 17 rare earth metals. Health again. I mean, we, are, we have advanced so much in the field of health. Uh, Professor Yashpal in the morning said he was treated with cancer. That was only possible because the technology existed. The technology exists only because of REEs. MRI, X-ray, lasers, neutron, radiotherapy, drug treatments, all of them are existing because of REEs. So let's, now we realize the extent and the dependability we are on REEs. Let's understand a bit on how the world demand and resources of REEs at the moment work. The global production is about 133,600 tons. Uh, and the demand is about 136,100 tons. The demand is more than the supply, but we can manage 2,500 tons. That's not a big number. Compared, comparatively, that's not a big number, so we can manage by our ground stocks. But by 2015, the supply is probably going to be remain the same, but the demand is going to go over 200,000. What do you do then? What do you expect? Will you still have your new iPhone? Will you still have your new laptop? Will you still be able to get the clean technologies? This is something that you guys don't think about. So that's what matters. Because if the supply goes up, and I probably see that about four people are born every second, if more people start buying smartphones, more Apple produce. How do you produce them if you don't have the resources to produce? Uh, looking at the current uh, stocks we have, uh, as I said, China has 50% of the stock almost, but it gives all of it. The other is with uh, United States about 12%, the independent states have 17%, India has about 3%, so we are, but we, the fact that comes is we cannot use that, right? We cannot use that because the situation, current situation, we cannot use the stocks. Developing a new mine can take over 10 years. Even if we start mining for those REEs, we cannot use them for the technology we want because the technology moves faster than mining. Technology is moving, we have seen all the technology coming back in the last 10 years, but it would take over a decade just to make a new mine in India and start getting all the permits, getting people out of place, taking out the REEs and exploiting it. Uh, like he says, the bottom line is that we're not going to run out, but it's an issue which we need to focus on and to build the supply base and to improve these technologies which you reuse and use these uh, resources very well. <coughs> These recent uh, results highlight the serious supply ch challenges we are facing today. REEs uh, are something that we all need to think about. That's what uh, TED is all about, <coughs> to our new ideas. Uh, so that's what you guys need to think about what to in innovate and what to design that doesn't use this and probably makes a substitute for REEs. Can you have a substitute for your mobile phone today? Can you have it? If you don't use a mouse, you're probably going to move to a tablet. But that again depends on REEs. So what are you going to substitute? 
in place of this to use. That's what you need to you know what that's what you design to work it in. And the simple solution that everyone does not everyone knows but does not follow. Everyone knows about this idea, but no one follows it really. I mean, how many of you really recycle your own gadgets? You go and really give it to a recy recycle facility, you really reuse your gadgets. The simple idea is to recycle and reuse. The REEs can only be cons uh, maintained in sustainable development if they're reused. They're not, you cannot create them because they're minerals. You cannot buy them off the market because it's a stock. You can only use, it's, uh, in the world there's a fixed amount, you cannot buy and sell most of it. You just have to reuse and recycle. That's the only possible way. In the next two years, I predict if we do not manage the REs in a, a sustained way, the, we won't be able to get the new devices. We won't be able to get new defense technologies, health, health. Everything's in China right now. And China is the only one country which controls. A communist country, it again, has a lot of control over those resources. How do you expect to use these new devices, new technologies, without having REs in stock? India does, has 3%, but in the next 10 years, it cannot take, take use those 3%. Thinking about that is what you guys need to do. Con considering you are coming from such high college <coughs> and educational backgrounds, you guys need to think about how are you going to live without technology when it's so much in, uh, in depth of your lives. How, what are you going to do if you don't have them? So the solution here lies in probably finding a solution, an idea that does not use this, and probably find substitute for REEs. Right now, everything is on REEs, as I said. This event is happening because we are depending on our devices made through our EVs. Rare earth elements are the problem and we need to have a solution. Thank you, guys.